Hi and welcome to Priori Digital Studio Tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to set up and use your Bill Calendar 2.0 in the most efficient way. In this video, I am using GUI Sheets, but the Excel version is almost the same. First thing, we protect most of the cells where there are formulas to make sure that you don't erase any important formulas that could impact the spreadsheet. So if you see this message, it means you're not supposed to touch it. But don't worry, I'll show you step by step how to prepare your spreadsheet. So if you see this message, simply click on the X and you will be fine. Moreover, we established a color code to show you which cells can be edited and which one cannot. So basically, you only can edit the cells that have a white background. Another small warning, please don't move a cell from one place to another. If you do move a cell, it could generate an issue by messing up the automation of the spreadsheet. The best way to avoid these errors is to copy and paste your data. So the first tab you'll work with is the Setup tab. This is where you'll enter all the key information needed for the spreadsheet to function properly. On the left-hand side, you'll notice a navigation ribbon that lists all the available tabs for quick and easy access. This spreadsheet only has five tabs, but having this ribbon makes it much more convenient to move around. If you prefer not to see this ribbon, simply click on the small uh, minus sign to hide it. This is the only place in the spreadsheet where you'll need to click on OK. To bring the ribbon back, simply click on the plus sign and it will reappear. Now let's take a closer look at the setup tab itself. So the first thing you'll see is the currency symbol. By default, it is set to the dollar sign, but you can change it to any currency symbol you prefer and the spreadsheet will update automatically. Then you will see the start date. Simply enter the year and select the month to set the beginning of your spreadsheet timeline. Now let's explore the recurring tab. This is where you can enter all your recurring transactions neatly organized into four tables, income, bills, subscriptions, and debts. For each transaction, simply fill in the detail, the name of the transaction, the payment frequency, the amount, the start date for the first payment, as well as the end date if applicable. To make things clearer, let's walk through an example together. So let's say we had another income. So let's say paycheck Mary. The frequency will be every two weeks. So let's use the drop down menu and select every two weeks. Then let's say the amount is $1,000. So simply write 1,000. And let's say the first payment in is today's date. So September 20th. As you can see in Google Sheets, you can double click on the date and you will see a small calendar. Unfortunately, this feature is not available in Excel, so if you are an Excel user, you simply need to type in the date. We don't have an end date for this specific paycheck, but if you had one, you can simply write the date. So we can take into consideration that the end date is totally optional, and you can only enter an end date if this recurring payment or income is finished. In this tab, you may notice two different types of warning messages. The first one appears if the first payment date falls outside of the date range you set up in the setup tab. So let's go back to the setup tab and see what we put as the start date. As you can see here, our start date is in January 2025. So let's go back to our recurring tab and let's change Mary's uh, paycheck to the 20th of September 2024. As you can see, 2024 is outside our chosen range and we can see a small warning appear. So to make this warning disappear and the spreadsheet work, simply update the date and as you can see, everything will be removed. The second warning shows up if the end date is earlier than the first payment date. So as you can see here, if we put, for example, the end date on September 17th for Mary's paycheck, which is before September 20th, we also have a small warning. So make sure to also update the end date and everything will be fine. In both cases, the date in question will turn red and a clear message will appear just above the table to let you know exactly what the issue is. Finally, this tab is fairly wide, so make sure to scroll to the right to view all the available tables. Now let's take a look at the payments tab. This tab provides a chronological summary of your transactions. One important note, this tab is not protected in order to let you use filter easily. Be careful not to delete or overwrite any formulas. Only make changes in the designated white cells. So let's have a look and see how to use this tab. If you need to make a change to a transaction, for example, 
to the amount or to the date, simply update the white columns on the right-hand side of the table. If the details looks correct, no further actions is needed. Once the payment has been made, simply check the box under the paid column on the left to mark it as complete. Now let's have a look at the filters and navigation. This tab includes four main filters at the top so you can display only the data you want to see. For example, if you want to view only income-related transactions, simply use the category Filter and select Income. So as you can see here, we can only see the income information. Then you can easily uh, remove this filter by click on, clicking on it again and then click on Select All Five. For Excel users, please note that the, some filtering features available in Google Sheets, like this drop-down filter, may not work in Excel. In that case, use the standard table filter at the top of the sheet instead. As a small additional note, you'll also find a dedicated column for descriptions or notes if you need to document anything specific about a transaction. This tab is especially helpful for tracking and managing your recurring financial obligation in one clear and editable place. Now let's take a look at the calendar tab where you can view all your monthly bills in one place. This product actually includes two calendar tabs, calendar one and calendar two. They work exactly the same way, but having two versions make it easier to plan ahead. For example, when you're near the end of one month, you can open the second calendar to prepare for the upcoming month without losing sight on the current one. In this tab, you simply need to enter the year. So simply type in 2025, for example, or 2026, and then use the drop down menu to select the month. Then you simply need to set the start date of the week. For example, I personally prefer starting the week on Sunday. You can also enter a starting balance for the month if you wish. Once that's set, the calendar will display all your income, bills, subscriptions, and debt along with their current spending amounts. A legend is provided to help you quickly identify the category of each transaction. When a transaction is marked as completed in the previous tab, it will automatically appear grayed out with a strike through. So you'll never lose track of what's already been paid. Finally, today's date is highlighted in yellow, making it easy to see exactly where you are in the month. On the left hand side, you'll find a mini calendar that highlights all the days with a recurring payment due. Just below, you can easily track your monthly progress at a glance and there's also a dedicated space for notes where you can jot down reminders or important details. One of the biggest improvements compared to the first version of the spreadsheet is the weekly summary on the right-hand side of the calendar tab. Here, you'll find a clear breakdown of your income and expenses by week, including the weekly total, the amount left to pay, and the cumulative total, running total across the weeks. Each column is explained in a legend above. For example, the cumulative adds up your weekly totals as you go. So as you can see, in week one, it equals that week's total. Then in weeks two, it equals weeks two plus weeks one and so on. So let's take an example together. As you can see in the first week, we have a weekly total in the income section uh, at $900. And then if we go back to week two, this income is at $1,400. So in the cumulative, we can see that it is $900 plus $1,400, which is $2,300. So this is the cum cumulative total of week one and week two income. Then if we go to week three, you will see it's week one, week two, and week three total, which is cumulative of $7,300 and so on. At the bottom of each week, you'll also see a balance which combines your cumulative total with your starting balance, giving you a quick snapshot of where you stand. A very important note, this spreadsheet is designed to display only your recurring monthly transactions. It does not include your variable transactions like groceries, restaurants, or things you buy on the go. So keep that in mind when you're reviewing your totals. If you want to print this calendar, it's also really easy. So the first thing you want to do is to unzoom so that you can see all your calendar. Then select all the cells that you want to print. So we encourage you to select the whole calendar as done here. Then once you selected everything, simply click on the printing icon. And then as you can see here, 
the calendar is very, very small. So in the printing drop down menu, simply select uh, selected cells. As you can see here, we much more better see the calendar here. Then you simply need to click on next and print your calendar. Details on how to print your calendar in both Google Sheets and Excel is available in the README instruction file included in your order. So that's it. I hope this tutorial helps you easily set up your spreadsheet. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or concerns. Follow Priori Digital Studio on YouTube for sneak peeks on our new templates.